In double machine learning, I would like to uh, remind you that the last step, we estimate a simple OLS where we regress residuals of Y and residuals of W, and we get one beta. In generalized random forest, what we estimate is the random effects model. So you regress Y on WI and you allow the treatment effect to vary for each individual. Note that if we are under non-RCT conditions, meaning that there can be confounders between W and Y, we first partial out the controls from Y and W and then return back to this as a third step. So notice that what we are interested in is the prediction of the treatment effect for some of these characteristics X, based on what we estimate for different people with similar characteristics. In particular, the generalized random forest estimates beta x non-parametrically. I know that this formula can look messy. The general intuition is as follows. So, for example, we take three subsamples of data and we run three causal trees. Causal tree number one, causal tree number two, causal tree number three. And then we are interested for a new person with characteristics x here. In the first causal tree, this x falls into this region with this number of observations. In the second tree, to another region. In the third tree, to a yet another region with different treatment effects. What in the end you will collect with the causal forest that uses causal trees is the weights. For example, if we want to predict something for a person with characteristics x, these two observations will be given the highest weight why? Because they appear in all three causal trees. Whereas these observations will be given lower weight because they appear only in two out of three causal trees in the same segment with X. And then the rest, even lower pr probabilities. So in the end, what causal forest does is that it tells us that the treatment effect for this new observation X will be more similar to these observations, less similar to these observations, and quite unsimilar to these observations. How does this help us? It will help us to weight the average of different treatment effects estimated across all different causal trees. So in the end, when we want to compute the expected treatment effect for someone with observation X, we will get a weighted average across treatment effects for different observations weighted according to the weights from the causal forest. Now, if we return back to the National Study of Learning Mindsets, you can use the causal forest function from the JRF algorithm that is uh, provided by the S. Sitip Shirani and Weiger. This code performs the following steps. Step number one, it predicts y from x and it collects out-of-sample predictions of y. Then it predicts w from x using random forest, and it collects out-of-sample predictions for the treatment. So these two steps are similar to the first two steps of double machine learning with uh, random forest. And then the third step, it runs a causal forest of prediction errors uh, for y on prediction errors for w using these covariates as potential mediators. Then we also say that we have clusters by supplying school IDs, and we ask to equalize cluster weights, meaning that all schools will have exactly the same weight, independent of their actual size and number of uh, pupils, by drawing the same number of observations per cluster. So how does uh, random forest or causal forest uh, become cluster robust? It accounts for clustering at the bootstrapping stage. First, it draws a subsample of clusters, meaning schools, and then it randomly samples data within those sampled schools. And then for out-of-back predictions, it considers an observation I to be out-of-back if its cluster was not drawn at the bootstrapping stage. So it only predicts for students from another schools. Then we can ask the causal forest to provide us with average treatment effect for a certain subset of people. The average treatment effect calculates augmented inverse propensity weighting conditional average treatment effect according to these formulas. Finally, you can test for the presence of heterogeneity. 
Test calibration is a test for heterogeneity in treatment effects, based on yet on another paper by Chernozhukov and co-authors. It creates two synthetic variables, CI and DI. CI is the prediction by using only average treatment effect. DI is the additional prediction that takes into account the heterogeneity in treatment effects as predicted by the causal forest. Then it runs regression, the residuals in treatment, on the CI and DI. If treatment heterogeneity is well calibrated, then delta should be equal to 1, meaning that if indeed causal forest finds heterogeneity in treatment effects that is so different from the average treatment effect, then delta would be substantially larger than zero. But if it doesn't, if the causal forest does split our data, but then in the end there is not much of the heterogeneity in treatment effects, so delta would be equal to zero. In this study, they found that the p-value of delta was um, larger than 5% which means that there is no evidence of heterogeneity in treatment effects. So it is likely that this intervention was actually affecting every single student on average in the same way. Finally, we can ask to uh, provide us with a table of uh, variable importance. It calculates a simple weighted sum of how many times feature I was split on at each depth of, by the causal forest. And in the study, it spits out that 24% of splits were done on uh, X1, which is the share of people with fixed mindset in a school. And then they look at the heterogeneity with respect to X1, what would be the predictions of the causal forest for someone with different values of X1, and then they find that, yes, it may, it may look like that someone who was treated in a school where there's a higher share of people with fixed mindset, this learning mindset intervention might have been not so effective as in, in the schools where already many students had learning mindset. To summarize, the generalized trend of force provides an elegant solution to estimate average treatment effect non-parametrically. It captures heterogeneity in treatment effect and formally tests it. It also helps you find which variables mediates the heterogeneous response the most and all of this can be done accounting for clustering and potential confounding between treatment and outcome variable. Moreover, what I showed you was just the use of the generalized random forest where we use it for random effects model. While, um, in fact, you can use this machinery for any local moment equations estimation. So basically you can use it for quantile regression as well, IV estimation and so on.